Hello, it is Wednesday, October 27th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. This is a Wednesday puzzle. A little bit trickier, perhaps, than the Monday and Tuesday we've seen so far, but not at the level of tomorrow's likely wacky Thursday-themed puzzle. Hope you enjoyed yesterday's bonus solve of Lyle Entwistle's Rebus-only puzzle. Oops, all Rebuses, <laughs> the puzzle. Um, I enjoyed doing that. I'm, perhaps I'll solve more uh, community-created puzzles here as uh, sort of bonus epilogues after the standard daily solve. And again, as a reminder, if you're interested in participating in that community, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which has the Constructor's Corner Room, where people have been constructing these puzzles, getting feedback on them from other community members. It's been really fun. And there's a link to join that Discord chat server in the description field under each video. You can also get special access, additional access, to the Discord server by backing the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve. But the generally most of the Discord is completely freely accessible to anyone. So do feel free to join that. And with that said, let's discuss a few of the clues from yesterday's New York Times puzzle. Um, George Adams points out that the only abbreviations I've ever encountered for Alberta, Canada are ALTA, the usual abbreviation employed in print media, and AB, the postal abbreviation. And that's in contrast to ALB, which is how it was abbreviated in yesterday's puzzle. And I think I saw at least one other person make the same comment. So that might have been a non-standard abbreviation. Chris Lavornia answers my question about a catbird seat. I clearly uh, misremembered what that is completely. And, and he points out, the catbird seat simply means having the upper hand between two parties in scenarios such as negotiation. So there we go. Kathy Swope explains what bee balm is, the plant that I didn't know, that in the puzzle uh, abutted begonias. We had begonia and bee balm. Bee balm, she says, is a North American perennial plant native to the prairies. The scientific name is monarda. Uh, daisies often also grow with monarda in a meadow or a native plant garden. And then regarding e-checks, an example of the dreaded e-words, Dan Yon has a bit of a slight disagreement with me in terms of my, my, uh, my ridicule. Uh, this person says, it's interesting with this clue, because I've been here to observe the saga of ridiculous e-clues, because e-checks are real things. They are more for big ticket items or regular fees, and they're slightly more secure, requiring account and routing information, and they're often the only type of electronic payment accepted by leasing offices and other rental property holders. Fair enough. I suppose e-checks, perhaps I will grant, these are things that may have some relevance to the real world and therefore slightly more justifiable in appearing in the New York Times crossword. And finally, Calixto Navarro leaves a comment simply saying, please read this E comment. So I suppose now that I've done so, I've entered E comment into the corpus of spoken language in YouTube videos, and perhaps that makes it a valid future crossword fill. Who knows? I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what this, this commenter's game is. I don't know what they're getting at making me read that comment, but I did it. I played into your trap. Okay, let's solve today's puzzle. This is a Wednesday crossword constructed by uh, Johanna or Johanna Fenimore, and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. There will be some sort of theme. We don't yet know what it is. So let's get started and find out. Okay, the fox and the grapes, e.g. This would be a fable. This is one of, I think, Aesop's fables. And I, and I believe the source of the phrase sour grapes, the idiomatic expression. Okay, one down, we have wabbit pursuer Elmer. This would be Elmer Fudd of Looney Tunes? Is that the WB one? I'm pretty sure. Diarist Nin, Anais Nin, the author. And, oh, this is fun. Mel, who voiced one down. Mel Blank, the uh, great multifaceted voice actor of cartoons. And a grassy field, a Lee or Lay, L-E-A. A Greek H, Eta, O. Oh. What is this? <laughs> Strange. Hold on. Let me quickly look at 14 across. Yet to be rented is unlet. Yes, indeed. An apartment to let. Whenever I see signs saying to let, which are um, actually more common here in the UK than they are in the US to use that, that language, I always briefly read it as toilet. Anyway, 
17. Classic line from the Superfans sketch on SNL. I have no idea. I, w I wonder if this is the theme. I bet it is, because this is such a, such a non-standard answer. So it could be a Saturday Night Live related theme, perhaps. We'll have to see. I have no, I, I mean, I, I don't know this at all, but if I had to guess based on what's here so far, I would guess damn with a, an elongated A. You could imagine that being a sort of catchphrase. Um, let's let's see. Let's check the crosses and see if that helps. Oh, maybe not. Hockey great Bobby, no. This will be one of our three-letter sportsmen, ought or or. And I think the hockey one is or. And I believe the baseball one is ought. So I think this is or, which would make my guess incorrect. What often follows, did you hear? Did you hear? I don't know. I'm not really sure. Blank Jima, Iwo Jima. Unsuck Chin's Alice in Wonderland, for one. I don't know. I suppose this is some sort of work based on Alice in Wonderland. I don't know if it's a piece of music, a painting, a sculpture, um, or something in, something entirely different. I don't know, an essay, who knows. A hospital scan could be an MRI in three letters. A strong urge. Uh, and Paul, and, uh, sarong for one. Rap. Some sort of rap, some fine art. Uh, is this Iwo Jima? It must be Iwo Jima. I'm just not seeing these crosses. Um, some fine art. Op art? No. This, this looks like MRI. Some fine art. Oils. Ah, oil paintings. Oils. There we go. Okay. Does this help? Buddy could be a pal. Yeah, I want strong urge to start with IMP, and it does. Im... I this will be so, I guarantee this will be so obvious when I see it, but I'm just not seeing it yet. Uh, Sarong for one, it looks like it might be rap. Masterful moves. I don't know. William who lent his name to a state. I believe this is William Penn of Pennsylvania fame. And imitates could be apes. So that does extend the A. I mean, we can assume it does extend a bit, but I don't know where it stops because I don't know what the rest of the word is. Dressed like a Supreme Court justice would be robed. Ah, well, there it goes. Does that... Is that right? Let's check the crosses. What often follows, did you hear? Did you hear... I don't know why I'm not seeing that. And then, Unsuck Chin's Alice in Wonderland, for one. Could this be op art, weirdly? I'm just saying that because I came to mind before when I was thinking of fine art, but I don't know. Oh, of course that wouldn't have been true with fine art, because as a reminder, you're never going to repeat a word from the clue in the answer. So the, the most fundamental reason this wasn't op art is because op art doesn't fit in four letters, but also you wouldn't clue something with a word that appears in the answer. Anyway, let's keep going. I'm sort of struggling with this zone up here. Overturn could be upend and an ogreish sort. A brute or... Oh, an opera. Unsuck Chin's Alice in Wonderland. It must be an opera, so it is a piece of music. That looks right. Oh, right. So what often follows, did you hear? Did you hear? A rumor. Oh, I see why I was failing here. I was trying to find a word or a phrase that follows, did you hear? But I let myself get overly consumed or distracted by a particular uh, line of thinking that was totally incorrect. They were looking for a concept that follows. Did you hear? It's the rumor that one might have heard, not the next word that is spoken. Oh, an ogreish sort is a meanie, and a scamp is a rascal, maybe? And then that makes this classic line from the Supervan sketch on SNL, duh, bears. So, uh, I guess they're super fans of probably not the animal bears, but probably sports team, the bears. Masterful moves. Um, chops, perhaps, which is sort of used 
often by musicians. I mean, I think used by practitioners of many crafts, but I believe it started actually specifically in among jazz musicians, their chops, their skills. Okay. Um, a humorist suffix with crap and schnoz. Uh, maybe it's not chops because I wanted to say ola, schnozola, crapola. So let's see. As usual, <laughs> my explanation of the uh, origin of chops has meant it was the wrong answer. I spent a bunch of time on it, therefore not correct. Uh, baked blank, baked Alaska as a dessert. Apple platform is iOS, the i operating system, the international operating system, perhaps. A big dog's bark could, I don't know, a woof maybe? Is that too obvious? Prep for a surprise party in a way you might hide for a surprise party to surprise the birthday person. A nemesis could be a bane with that A there. I was thinking foe or something with it's not enough letters. So one's bane, one's a nemesis. And then here we have, ah, right, another theme clue. Classic line from the delicious dish sketch on SNL. Shweddy. Balls? Would that work with this wraps? I don't know. Oh, right. Strong urge. An impulsion, perhaps? And then masterful moves. <laughs> Why am I not seeing what this is? I'm sorry. Um... Is this not impulsion? Sue Grafton's Blank for Innocent. Well, this is this is sort of a gimme if you are aware of this series. Sue Grafton writes novels whose titles begin with a letter of the alphabet and then is for a word beginning with that letter. So innocent would be, oops, I is for innocent. There we go. And if one doesn't just assume, say one asks, I'm asking, what are these, what are these answers? So wrong. Let's see. Oh, here's another one. Classic opening line from an NBC sketch show. Okay. Well, this one, I'm pretty sure I can fill out. So the show in question um, is clearly SNL because we have two theme answers that refer to it. So that's kind of interesting, actually. I suppose if they wanted this to be more difficult, they could have not put SNL in these theme answers, and they could have said from the sketch show in 30, you know, from 38 across or something, or the sketch show reference in that, whatever. But that might be getting too obscure because this is all, this already sort of requires no, particular knowledge of this program in order to get these clues without crosses. Anyway, this would be live from New York. And I might not know all that much about SNL in terms of what it contains, but I do know a fact about it that explains why the opening line is live from New York, it's Saturday night. Uh, I mean, it, it makes sense because the show airs live on Saturday night. But in fact, when the show began, it was simply called Saturday Night, not Saturday Night Live. The first, the first season, I believe it was called Saturday Night. But there was another program on television already, I think, called Saturday Night, unrelatedly. And so they changed it to Saturday Night Live, but kept the opening line as was. I believe that's all correct, but as is sometimes the case when I say things live on this channel without having checked them beforehand, sometimes I get details wrong, so I'm sure someone will tell me if I have. If one is attired, one is clad, here on 31 down, and a belief system is a credo, mirin and sake are both rice wines. And if one made something level, one evened out, evened it out? Made level, evened out? It looks right. Here we have a king or queen topper. Uh, king or queen, the face cards, could be topped by an ace in various card games. And a reply to gracias would be de nada, of nothing, it's nothing, you're welcome, in response to thank you. Uh, exist could be are, they exist, they are. A skin layer is dermis, as in your epidermis. And Hank's sleepless in Seattle co-star. Um, probably Meg Ryan, right? I think they're sort of 
famously paired together in various romantic comedies. Here we have also that looks like two and a subject of arms talks. Subject of arms talks, and it's an abbreviation. So this will be some sort of weapon, weapons of mass destruction, perhaps, as in nuclear weapons, I think most frequently uh, in arms talks. A womb mate could be a twin. And blank funk in a funk. I'm sort of in a funk in this northeastern corner of the the uh, grid. And then here we have Baby Blank, the Mandalorian nickname. So that's the Star Wars TV show uh, with Baby Yoda. And a sound from a fan could be a fur, a, a whir. Sorry, without the cross, you might, I might have assumed this refers to a fan at a sports event or something. But no, it refers to a mechanical fan, I believe, with that W, a whir. A portable structure that's pitched. A yurt, I suppose, a sort of uh, constructed outdoor dwelling. If one looks all over for something, one hunts for it. Oh, sarong is a wrap skirt. There we go. I don't know why I wasn't seeing that with that K. That seems so obvious in retrospect. Oh, masterful moves are coups. I see. Right. You could say, oh, that was a real coup, that game-winning game point or whatever. And so this is impulsion. Okay, so this is Shweddy Balls, whatever that is. And here we have Blank Duke, 1976 Stevie Wonder hit, Sir Duke. And uninspiring could be so-so. Overseer of Hamlet's duel with Laertes. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> I think as I mentioned recently, when another Hamlet clue came up, I saw a production of Hamlet just a month or two ago. Again, with Ian McKellen as Hamlet, it was fascinating. Um, but I don't remember because I'm, I, uh, because my brain is going, I guess, I don't know. Classic line from the Wayne's World sketch on SNL. Oh, this I sort of remember. We're not worthy. What's funny is I've actually, I've never seen a Wayne's World sketch and I've never seen the film Wayne's World, weirdly. It's not intentional. I've not avoided seeing Wayne's World. I've just never happened to see it. But somehow I've, I've seen you know, this clip or something. And I do recognize that phrase. We're not worthy. Okay. Oh, is it Osric? The Overseer of Hamlet's Duel with Laertes? Indrian honorifics would be Shrees. So that's probably right. Council site of 1545. The Council of Trent. Sounds right to me. Absorbs as body moisture. Wicks. You always see that in advertising for technical clothing, sports clothing. It, it wicks sweat, which I guess is absorbs. Here we have religious offshoots, which are sects, and what the tangent of 45 degrees is equal to. Um, it must be one. I wouldn't have remembered that, certainly, without the cross, but in three letters with an E at the end, it must be one. And then uh, how some will solve this crossword in ink, not I. I will solve it in e-ink here on this screen. Classic line from the Blue Oyster Cult sketch on SNL. Ah, here's another one I know. <laughs> More cowbell. This is the famous... Blue Oyster Cult sketch with uh, Christopher Walken. The thing that's really fun about that sketch, which I guess is what makes it good, and now I'm going to ruin something funny by explaining what's funny about it, but genuinely, once you hear that cowbell in the Blue Oyster Cult song, Don't Fear the Reaper, it really is impossible to unhear how prominent the cowboy cowbell is in the legitimate recording of that track. Okay, something that's catchy. A web, I suppose. A web is catchy. And the, the question mark is here is an indicator of a pun or a bit of wordplay. And so catchy is not being used in the way that it would typically be used in a strictly grammatical fashion. It's, it's catchy, the thing that catches things, a web. So it's just a bit of a pun. And actress Arthur B. Arthur. And start of a playground selection process. This would be, I think, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. So the start of that would be eeny. Children's children's playground rhyme, I suppose. Made you cry would be bod, I think. So here's another pun indicator, the question mark. And in this case, you refers not to you, the second person pronoun, but rather a uh, a sheep, female sheep. And so the sheep bod made you cry or ba. A laughing scavenger is a hyena. They have that laughing sounding cry, and a New Haven Ivy Leaguer. This is, um, oh, I suppose this is actually not so much a bit of crossword ease as is its counterpart, uh, Eli. So 
New Haven is where the prestigious uni- American University, Yale, is located. And so uh, a student of, at Yale could be called a Yaley, could also be called an Eli, which is the more crosswordese version of this answer. Yaley and Eli, I think, are basically synonyms. And a little dog's bark is a yap. That fits with begged being pled here. And blank au lait could be cafe au lait, coffee and milk. Does that fit? Donut go with on an orchard tour? Sure, cider. You could have an apple cider at an apple orchard. And I'll take that as a no. Pot au feu is a French stew, so that confirms the F. And a humorist, su- humorous suffix with most and best. Mostest and bestest. So that completes the puzzle. And there's the Wednesday. There we go. So, um, yes, that was, uh, <laughs> that was a theme there that was a little bit out of my reach. It's funny. I, the, the first two took quite a few crosses and the third and final ones I was able to get pretty, um, pretty, pretty quickly, I suppose, just because I happened to be familiar with those. I'll be very curious to see in the comments how, well, how tricky this was for people, because it's certainly the kind of thing that for some people could be an absolute slam dunk and you could get some big long fills right off the bat. And uh, for some people, it'll be a little trickier. And I suppose for me, it was somewhere in the middle. It wasn't a, it didn't uh, ruin my day, but, uh, but it wasn't a series of immediate uh, instinctive fills. And I did, I did have a bit of trouble over here. Impulsion, I struggled with a bit. I was, I was sort of on that track in my mind. I knew I, I wanted it to do have IMP at the beginning to be connected with the the idea to impel something, but I just couldn't quite land on impulsion for some reason. I think because that's a slightly, it doesn't feel like the most obvious version of that word, a strong urge. I'm actually now curious to look up what differentiates a compulsion from an impulsion. My suspicion would be that strictly or more traditionally, perhaps, a compulsion would be something that acts on you externally, whereas an impulsion is something that is more self-generated. But I don't know if that's strictly true. And it may... um, there, there may be a gray area between the two, but I'll, I'm going to look that up. I'm curious. And then wrap skirt was, for some reason, I had trouble with that. A sarong, a wrap. I wanted that to be the case, but then I couldn't <laughs> couldn't get skirt even when I had the K with Alaska. So go figure. Um, I don't think there were any other big areas of challenge that I particularly remember, but let me know how you fared. It's fun to have Elmer Fudd and Mel Blank um, near enough one another. Although... That makes three proper nouns all next to each other in the first three downs and crossing this, um, actually crossing two very specific bits of pop culture ephemera. So these, there's sort of this entire little region in the corner of the grid that's entirely consumed by proper nouns and cultural references. So that's that's a tough area, actually. I could imagine some people struggling with that. Um, but there we go. That was the Wednesday, Wednesday crossword. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. Click the bell, smash the bell, as I think as I think one says. Uh, and pass this video along if you think you know someone who might enjoy it. Um, perhaps you've got an SNL mega fan in your life. And this, this is the puzzle to, uh, to doctrinate them into the, into the world of, of crosswords. Uh, but maybe not, I don't know. Just show it to someone you like, perhaps, regardless. And if you particularly want to support this series, you can do so through the ongoing Patreon campaign. Uh, we are reaching the end of the month, so there may be people who are, who are waiting or holding off until the month ticks over before they join the Patreon campaign. But if you are a member, you can head over there and see a whole raft of bonus videos. The New York Times monthly bonus, the uh, weekly mini puzzle speed solves, the weekly Boss Words Fall Themeless League um, competition puzzles. So that's all up there. And 
some people contribute at a level that is particularly generous, and I would like to thank a few of them today for that generosity. Today, I would like to particularly thank Joseph Schwalbach, Overfull Hitbox, the inestimable Hood Monster, and the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia. So thank you, Joseph, Overfull Hitbox, Shantanu, and Hood Monster. I really do appreciate your uh, your contributions. It means a lot, and it helps this whole thing going. So thanks. And um, I suppose that's it for today's crossword. I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle, the, uh, the first sort of weird puzzle of the week, maybe. Usually the puzzle when the theme gets a little more ambitious or tricky. We'll have to see. Do join me then. But until that point, have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm-hmm.